I'm sure most of you saw that Eddie Hearn interview the other day on AFL TV where he was talking about the possibility of Deontay Wilder stepping aside to allow the undisputed fight to happen. And Eddie Hearn had expressed some interest in maybe working out a step aside deal before. But now all of a sudden he's saying, nah, we don't want to not just pay Deontay Wilder any step aside money. We don't want to become undisputed champion and then be obligated to fight Wilder afterwards. It seems like Eddie Hearn is getting a bit spiteful towards Deontay Wilder because of the fact that Deontay Wilder and his team gave Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua the runaround for what, over a year? I mean, that's facts, people. Deontay Wilder was offered the Anthony Joshua fight on multiple occasions. The last offer that Wilder received was for over a hundred million and he turned it down. In all the years I've been following the great sport of boxing, there are very few decisions which have baffled me more than Wilder's decision to turn down the AJ fight multiple times for career high money. Absolutely baffling. Deontay Wilder could have already been the undisputed champion, but instead he decided to listen to the people in his team who don't have his best interests at heart. And now he's not a champion of any description. He lost his WBC belt and he never had any of the other belts. I mean, if he doesn't know right now that it was a bad decision turning down the AJ fight, I guess he'll never know. So this is exactly what Eddie Hearn said in the IFL interview. And please excuse the helicopter above. I don't know if it's a police helicopter or a military. God knows what it is. But this is what Eddie Hearn said in the IFL interview. He said, quote, I think Bob Arum said in an interview at the weekend where he said he doesn't know where this number, $10 million supposedly, has come from. He said in interviews he won't step aside and with everything happening in terms of the uncertainty over the future of the world, let alone boxing, he's not going to want to step aside. We also don't want to enter into a deal where we say, oh, when we beat Tyson Fury, we have to face Deontay Wilder and he has to get 40%. Deontay Wilder is out. He's done. He's just a voluntary challenger. We want a clean slate when we enter into a deal, whether it's a one fight deal with Tyson or a two fight deal. But when AJ beats Tyson Fury, we don't want an obligation to fight Deontay Wilder. What's he got to do with it? He's done. He's beaten. He just got knocked out. If he beats Tyson Fury, then we want to fight Deontay Wilder. But if he doesn't, he's just back into the rankings. He's not coming into a fight with the undisputed champion. So in that respect, it's a lot easier for us to have a clean slate and everybody is on the same page with that as well. End quote. Yeah, those are the words of fast car Eddie Hearn talking about Wilder. No voluntary shot. Wilder will be getting against AJ, nothing like that. So it looks as though the Fury Wilder fight will go ahead the way people are talking right now, the way Eddie Hearn's talking, the way that, of course, Bob Arum's talking, and I guess Wilder himself. So, yeah, that is what that is. But I do sense a bit of spite in what Eddie Hearn is saying because previously, both Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua had said they would give Deontay Wilder a voluntary shot. But that was long before all the failed negotiations and what have you. But after all the offers went in, and all the nonsense from Team Wilder, Eddie Hearn has said, you know what? Have a taste of your own medicine. You want to try to freeze us out? See what it's like to get frozen out yourself. <laughs> you know, it's a shame. I understand why Eddie Hearn feels that way or may feel that way. But I still want to see AJ versus Wilder. I, I don't want to see it as much as I used to, of course, because before it was about being undisputed and the fight which still takes priority over all others for me is the undisputed fight, AJ versus Fury. But nonetheless, from a stylistic point of view, I still think that AJ versus Wilder is a great fight. It's an intriguing fight. And it's definitely one I'd love to see. And I hope we do see it before this era is over. And I hope we see it when both guys are still close to their peak. You would imagine, I mean, we could be wrong here because fighters peak at different ages, different times and for different reasons, but you would imagine that AJ is probably closer to his peak than Wilder is, and that Wilder might be, you know, possibly over the other side of the hill. I mean, not by a great amount, but 
Is Wilder going to get any better at this point? He'll surprise me if he does. We'll see in the next Tyson Fury fight. Uh, I think, as I've said before, the best strategy for Deontay Wilder, if he fights Fury again, is to actually use his legs a bit and move around. Not get pushed back, because there's, there's a difference between being pushed back and actually training to move around. Big difference. Difference in the mindset, difference in the different... Uh, the, the stance that you might use, the punches you might throw, and obviously just being prepared to fight that way mentally and physically. So, yeah, that's my take on what Eddie Hearn said in the IFL interview with regards to Deontay Wilder. Uh, sounded a bit spiteful. We'll see what happens, people. Looks as though the Fury Wilder uh, trilogy fight is going to take place at some stage, maybe in 2021. Maybe it won't even be this year. We'll see how things go. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out.